Hey guys, it's Lauren. Right off the bat, here are all of my socials and you should go follow them if you don't already. So on my channel, I'm always getting requests to try different editing apps. And the app that's definitely most requested is CapCut. But today I'm gonna be trying something out that I didn't even really know existed until like three days ago. Maybe I'm just on the wrong side of TikTok, but guys, why are we not talking about this? CapCut has a desktop editor for computers. This is so pivotal for me, you don't understand because I feel like one of my biggest struggles when I try out mobile editing apps is just the fact that it's like physically hard to edit on a phone. So for today's video, I'm going to be trying out CapCut on my computer and I'm going to treat this exactly like I would if I was editing on After Effects. I'm going to go through the process of adding and cutting clips and then adding my keyframes and graphs. But my main goal with this video is to really try to leverage the CapCut effects and mm, CapCut effects and features that are exclusive to the app and can't be found on After Effects. Because at the end of the day, guys, different doesn't automatically automatically mean worse and I think it's possible for anyone to make a bomb edit regardless of what they're editing on so please keep in mind that I have never tried this app out before so obviously I'm not going to be as well versed in it as I am on After Effects but if you do happen to be a CapCut pro I hope you can watch and laugh along also quick reminder to follow me on CapCut here is my username oh here is my username you guys should definitely follow me I hope to post some things on there all right guys enough said let's get into the video that was dumb because I just have to to open it again to start the video. All right, guys, this is what we're working with right now. Don't mind this picture. I was just testing some things out earlier. I do not know who that man is. But here is the CapCut desktop editor and it's kind of giving Final Cut Pro if you guys have ever used that. That's what I use to edit the very video you're watching right now. So there's basic, which is like manipulating position scale and then 2D rotation. You can change the opacity and then there's cutout, which because I am a CapCut Pro member, thank you CapCut, I can use. And I have not turned this on, but let's see. Whoa, wait, oh that eight, that's really good. This I haven't checked out, I guess these are other masks. Okay, but yeah, there's this whole other sector for animation, which at first I was like, I don't want to use any presets. Like I kind of want to do all my own keyframing, but like high key, a lot of these are really cool. Like, oh wait, you guys don't even know the audio. Prima Donna Girl, Marina and the Diamonds, the part that goes, would you do anything for me? Buy a big diamond ring. That part. And I'm editing Jungkook, as you can tell. But yeah, like, look, that was really good. There's also AI effects, which like, guys, I'm sorry, let me try this out real quick. <laughs> I'll do random. Beautiful face, fantasy girl, kneeling, crying, long, unkept. I'm interested in seeing what that is. Oh. Oh. I'm just not sure it fits the theme of my edit right now, so I'm gonna undo, but cute. Okay, then there's a whole other world here. There's text, audio, stickers, effects. Wait, guys, there's so much option. I'm overwhelmed. Whoa, they have a whole category dedicated to butterflies? 2019 Lauren would especially be eating that up. Then there's transitions. Movement glitch, distortion, slide split mask. Like, I feel like I could utilize something realistically in every single one of these categories, but we're gonna Gonna need to narrow it down. Ooh, there's a cube. Damn, Kaka really has been on their Zoom lately because wow. Okay, so let's craft out the vision for my edit. So first I wanna add some motion tile to this. That'd probably be in effects split. Yeah, here we go. Nine screens. What I need to do first, make the composition ratio four, three, pre-comp, add nine screens, and then we'll go back to one, one. Period. I ate that. I ate that up. Can you enter a compound clip? I'll undo the compound clip. I forgot to add my text because I want to add my watermark. By Lauren, of course. Are there text effects? Ooh. Wait, no, I want the pink text. And I'm pro so I can do it. Okay, my beat hits right here. I'll remember that. Because I'm going to do a mid-graph. Why not? Keyframe scale 0%. Put that here. And then let's see if I can figure this out. Highlight. Right click. No. Right click. Show keyframe animation. There we go. Okay, and then the little, oh, the tiny little grass there. Wait, this is cute. It's like a wee pop up. Okay, do I easy ease them here then? Or do I just click graph? Okay. So this is a value graph. I know how to manipulate this. Or you can kink it in different ways. Free curve, auto curve. What's the difference? I forgot to do mid graphs with value. I always do it with speed. This? 
There we go, yay! Wait, and I'll do some overshoot, and then I'll push them a little bit further apart, like three frames. Okay, create compound clip, nine screens. Okay, I'm actually gonna scale it out, and then I wanna do position panning, so I'll like drag it here, and then towards the end, over here. No, that looks bad. Okay, I wanna add like a fisheye effect towards the edges, cause I always do that with this type of motion tile. That would probably be in distortion. Oh, here. Ooh, wait, yes, yes, absolutely. I like the chromatic aberration though, nice touch. Wait, these position keyframes are weird. Wait, I'm also gonna mess around with the scale. It's gonna start off zoomed out, and then like here where it says by Lauren, zoom in, and then zoom back out, period. I guess that's a really shallow curve. Oh, I think that was smooth though. Maybe I just don't need these weird panning keyframes. Maybe I could do something with the rotation instead. It's taking me way too long to figure this out. <laughs> okay, I'll have the rotation keyframes follow the same path as the scale ones. And then the middle one will be like tilted to the right. The black hole might not be right for this specific opening though. So let me see if there's something else. Yes, yes, yes. Do your thing, CapCut. Now we need to work on the first transition of the edit. I know I wanna do like a null slide from this clip to this clip. So I'm gonna do it, I think, in a CapCut, like efficient, effective way. I'll put them next to each other. There's a gap, I don't care. It's a stylistic choice. And then I'll pre-comp them. Okay, so I'll increase the scale to 150. No, it needs to be more. Hold up. Hold up. They don't love you like I love you. Okay. Nah, I don't even know where the beat is. Hold on. Bring the beat in. I'm just on a Beyonce kick today. I don't know. So we'll add position keyframes here and then here with this one going to the left, to the left. I just, I had to, guys. Then we'll go to, of course, do not undo comma clip, show keyframe animation and do a cute little mid graph. Okay, that's nice. I'm back. I had to take some time off just to work on the edit on my own time and become more comfortable with like cap cut effects, techniques, how things are structured on the timeline because some things have been really tripping me up but I think I got the hang of it. I added a lot more stuff. So here's what the edit is looking like right now and low key, like why did I pop off? I kept going back in and like readjusting the keyframes and graphs for this first part and I think I got it like actually on beat this time But more importantly than that I was exploring the effects and guys This is some dope stuff like I use this star transition between these two clips and it's really smooth You guys can tell I've really been going crazy with the effects, but I'll explain what I have So cinema adds the borders to the intro play pendulum is like wiggle So it kind of just like shakes everything then I have this effect rainbow sparkle which literally looks like a coloring like this is it with the rainbow sparkle keep that in mind without <gasps> and then I have another sparkle effect that's to add like the sparkles on the border here I have dreamy glow which is another like yellow lighting effect and then I've been using the hell out of this wide angle distortion cuz it gives like that cool like fisheye effect on the edges and there's also this effect angel that looks a lot like sapphire edge rays from after effects my favorite effect is probably this shake right here like bruh it's called darkened flash but it just looks so good good. There's an effect called electro and then it just fades into velocity. I'm still figuring things out but basically I want this circle to like zoom out towards the end and then it'll go into this transition which is like a circle opening up. So I'm first just gonna have this circular picture slide in. The process is becoming like muscle memory. I'm so proud of myself. I'm gonna push it to the side. As you can tell I added some more sparkles and glitch to this part. Then we'll go to my keyframe animation, add kinks to the graph, and then I'm gonna do a mid graph. Do, 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 do. How's my posture? Great, right? Yes. All right, and while it slides in, I'm gonna add keyframes for rotation and scale. Then at the very end, I'm gonna rotate it to the right and then make it scale really tiny. And then, of course, edit my graphs. Do, do, wait, no. Not a, not a mid graph. I'm just so used to mid graphs. It is just an out graph. And the background fades to black in time. It's all good. Okay. Okay, for this little zoom in part, I know what I'm gonna do. Don't come at me. I masked this on my phone, but when it says buy a big diamond ring for me, we're gonna have a junk hook in a diamond. So I guess it'll start rotated to the right. And then I'll have the scale at zero. And now we will edit the graphs. You know, this is so similar already to my existing editing process that I'm like, the key is really just giving yourself time to like look at the layout, check out the effects, get familiar with the timeline. Like this Kafka timeline, we're besties now, okay? 
Ooh, that looks cool. Okay, we're gonna add our nine tiles scale up and then it's sliding down so this should start up. Position keyframe there and then we'll go to our keyframe animation, not the X, the Y. That keeps tripping me up because like on After Effects you have to manually separate the dimensions of X and Y for position, but here they're already separate, which I honestly think is very convenient because there are a lot of times where I am having to separate the dimensions and I'm like, why don't they just come pre-separated? I think when it says ring, I'm gonna manipulate the position, scale, and rotation of the diamond so that it lands on his hand. Yeah, I'm gonna use scale to zoom this clip forward because like his hand needs to be bigger in the center of the screen for this to work. Diamond ring, okay, per. Now I just need to work with these keyframes. I'll get the position to be here, maybe even a little tinier scale. And now I have to do four graphs. Yay, I'm so happy. I'm gonna try to do this so super fast. The time is 12.51. Let's try to get it done by 12.53. Okay, let's go. Period done. It's 12.52, like. That is actually, wait, why did I eat, why did I eat? Okay, what I did forget to add is like my extra panning keyframes to my velocity, but I also wanna add like a flicker effect. I would think it would be in light effect, but you never know. Maybe sunset? Yes, yes, immediately yes, immediately yes. Let's add our scale keyframes. I usually put it past the end of the clip, which is what I'm going to do here as well. I'm gonna have this one start a little bit more zoomed in and then zoom out. And then for this third clip, I have it start zoomed in and then I'm gonna zoom it out. Beautiful, love it. Okay, and I definitely wanna add some more light effects to this part, maybe repeat shake. Okay, I kind of liked it. What you guys aren't seeing right now is probably like 30 plus minutes of footage of me trying out every single one of these effects. <laughs> like on camera, I'm like, oh, it doesn't really like matter which one I choose. Like, you know, I'll just choose the first one that looks nice. And then the perfectionist tendencies off camera are like, Lauren. If you don't find the best effect out of every single one of these. You're a flop. But yes, I've looked long and hard and I think the repeat shake is the best for this specific clip. And now I'm gonna try to add a cool light effect. Maybe a rainbow flood. It adds some texture, why not? Why not? Wait, now I'm, should I try like compounding all of these clips? Does that work? Yes, it does. Okay, period. I don't know how that's gonna help me, but maybe it will. What could I do? Let me add my next clip so I can have a more like solid vision. He looks so cute here. Ooh, kaleidoscope. Cool, but not what I'm looking for. Wait, axis rope. Did you guys see that? That, yes. Yes? Oh my God, period. I'm kind of gagged. Like, I'm gagged by my own creation. Oh, that's an interesting angle. But anyway, we now I'm like, did I choose the right one? Did I like, oh, this is, oh my God, bye. They also have the, like a radial effect. There's so much going on. I'm loving all of it, but I'm also an incredibly indecisive person. Like I'm so indecisive. All right, guys, I'm not gonna make you suffer if you're watching the rest of my indecisiveness. I'm gonna go finish the rest of the edit and you guys will see the finished product. Prima Donna girl, don't you do anything for me Buy a big diamond ring for me Would you get down? All right, what do we think, guys? Did I do a good job using CapCut Desktop for the first time? Comment down below what you think. I genuinely had so much fun using CapCut today. Like, there are so many different features and effects that are already on the app and that are being added on a weekly basis. So, I don't know, it's just cool to see the app progress and develop. And also, so many people use CapCut now, and I can see why. It's really simple and straight to the point, but it also allows you to have a lot of creative freedom in terms of how you set up your timeline and how you utilize effects. So yeah, if you haven't already, I really recommend trying out the CapCut desktop app because personally for me, it brought a whole new experience to CapCut editing. All right, I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are and bye.